everyone it is Deanna Maurice here thank you so much for clicking in to watch this video I truly do appreciate it please go ahead and subscribe to my channel if you're not already and hit that thumbs up button if you like this video as well as leave me a comment today I'm going to be sharing with you all how I create my very own SVG files that can be used with any die cut machine pretty much like the Cricut or the Silhouette anyone who has a platform that allows you to upload your own images you can use this technique all right so let's get right into this video the program that I use to create my images is Photoshop and now this program is available to anyone through adobe.com you can just go on there and download the software for a monthly fee or you can purchase it right out uh, depending on how often you use it but it's a really handy program to have if you're willing to take the time to learn how to use it so here I've just created a new image and I'm pretty much laying out what I want to be printed I'm making these mr. and mrs. mugs that are personalized so here I'm just going through and finding the font that I'd like to use and lining it up correctly how I'd like it to look. If you're using a cursive style font, you're going to want to add a stroke to it because you don't want it to be too thin when the machine cuts it out. You want it to be thick enough, not too thick, but thick enough that it could transfer it easily onto your desired surface. If you have different layers like I do, make sure to go ahead and center the items or lay them out exactly how you want it to cut and group it so that it'll move together in one unit. Now this is the most important part of this entire tutorial. You want to make sure that you deselect the eye button so that you can no longer see the background and you are seeing kind of this onion grid, I believe that's what they call it, behind your image. This now means that your image moves on its own without a background and is now considered a clear image. Once you have that, you want to save it as a PNG file. So typically on Photoshop, it comes up as a PSD, which is Photoshop. If you want it to look like a, a picture, you save it as a JPEG. But for the clear background, you need to save it as a PNG file. In certain situations, it's easier for you to just line up all of the different cuts that you need to make and then create a new PNG file. For example, for these cups, I made about 19 different names. So instead of uploading individual names all at different times on Cricut Design Space, I did a layout similar to this and created a new PNG file so that it would be a lot easier for me. All right, go to Cricut Design Space and hit this upload button. It's a cloud with the arrow pointing up. You don't want to hit the image button, you want to hit the upload button. Then select the image that you saved as a PNG file. Because it's already in the format that we need it to be, just go ahead and hit simple because we don't want it to pick up any additional lines. There's no additional colors. We just want it to be a nice, smooth image. Now we're going to save it as a cut image. So Cricut Design Space will read it as something that just automatically needs to be cut and it's not something that needs to be printed first. Then go ahead and save it. Once you save it, you can click on it and insert it and there you go. That is how you create your own SVG or PNG files that can be used on many different die cut platforms. sharing with you all how I created these beautiful mugs using my custom SVG file. Here I'm using Oracle Black Gloss Permanent Vinyl that you can pick up online or at Michael's. Go ahead and remove your 
front portion that you no longer need from the backing and it should just glide off i love oracle vinyl it's been the best one that i've worked with thus far i've picked up some scissor so the scissor brand i'm gonna go ahead and try that out in a bit to see how that works out and i'll let you guys know if i like that vinyl but here i'm using my transfer tape and i'm lining it up with my vinyl cutouts and I'm just trying to get it as even as possible. I ended up cutting out the name separately so here I'm just trying to join the Mr. and the Davis together. I did that because once the image was cut out I wanted the names to be a little larger. But here I'm using my tool and I'm pushing from the center up so that it releases all of the air bubbles and then you can remove your backing and there you go, you have your vinyl transfer. These are the mugs that I'm going to be adhering my vinyl to today. So I'm just kind of eyeballing it <laughs> and trying to get it on there as level as possible. And once you have it the way that you would like it to look, just use your finger and press it down. And then you can go over it again with your little squeegee tool and rub over it until it adheres properly. If your vinyl isn't sticking as well, you may need to just push it back down and go over it a little bit more. And then once you do that, I'm sure that it would stick to the cup nicely. So as you can see here, I had to do that a few times, but once I did, it released easily from the transfer paper and then I had a beautiful personalized cup within minutes. I also wanted to share with you all how I decorated the hall for this event. It was a very small and intimate event with only about 30 guests, but we totally loved the way that it came out and it was a really beautiful event overall. We kept it really romantic since it was a event celebrating love. So we used a lot of pinks and reds and burgundies with gold chargers that definitely warmed up the area. I also have a custom layout here of the love is patient, love is kind, the scriptures that you can find in Corinthians uh, here and it was just a really, really beautiful touch to our event. Over here is where the food would be but you guys remember this, you guys have seen this in a previous video that I did so if you haven't seen it go ahead and check it out and so this was the way that the event turned out looking and I totally loved it. Thank you.